Welcome to the Salt Pile Podcast. We talked, we have stuff, we have media. Hi, Ben. I'm Hank. <laughs> it's all out of order. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah, we got uh, we got shit to talk about. Um, there's stuff. There's stuff, and uh, there's like a, a fair chunk of overlap, which is pretty nice. Um, it's true. I don't even know where to start. Me either. Well, then I'll I'll get into my first thing. Sure. I was recommended a book. It's going to be a theme wow. for this uh, this salt pile. Um, I thought it was going to be smut. <laughs> it wasn't. Um, oh, I. So I've been reading some romance novels on and off Mm -hmm. and uh someone mentioned something about they they looked up a thing and then their amazon recommendations were fucked and i'm like oh man i wonder what mine looked like and it was all romance novels and they all were like i'm not saying any of them are like highbrow or anything but like they were all like extra Mm. garbage Mm. and (laughs) i i went back into the chat and i'm like yeah like it's it's funny that this is all Amazon thinks I'm into right now, but like all of these are a little too straight for me. And someone's like, "Yo, you want you want a hookup? You want a good book?" I'm like, "Yeah, hit me." And it turned out to not be smut like at all, but mm. it turned it turned out to it ended up being like one of those very important books. Um about I, I don't know what that means. The, like just like I I'm gonna be like it's entered my my personal literary canon or whatever. Oh, like it's just like it fucking hit in a way that few things do and all that. So you um, liked it? Got it. Yes, it was crazy good. Um, sm- smut would have ruined it. <laughs> like there was a sex scene, but after like just a normal one that's like yeah that makes sense um Mm -hmm. the 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 premise of the book sounds smutty and ridiculous as hell a surfer girl hires a dominatrix to help her dominate the big wave (laughs) like i'm fucking ready i'm ready for the ridiculous bullshit but instead it was like crazy good prose and like this really bittersweet fucking story about a girl who just like got a little bit fucked by life and is kind of listless and um looking to to like take back control of shit and all that it just has it has incredible prose i can i can highly recommend it um the, the descriptions of shit and like it's a very it's a very chaotic it's a very dense and chaotic writing style but in a way that just kind of coalesces nicely so I was absolutely vibing with that book so yeah that was a that was a nice surprise wet dirt uh, I don't I don't even know if I said the name wet dirty dead before 30 it's good shit. Also, it's not that long, like 200-something pages. It's not chonky. Sure. So, yeah, that was nice. Uh, I don't really have anything to segue from that. Launch? Yeah. <laughs> I picked the one that's least, like, segwayable, I think. Yeah, because I don't read books. Yeah, I know you're. Yeah, or I don't read novels. No, you don't. You don't read. It's fine. No books. Give me. Honestly, give me like some nonfiction, and I'd be more interested. Yeah, novels, Beowulf. Beowulf, whatever. classic nonfiction yeah, story. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I can pick one. I can pick one of the yeah. things. Pick what's something the, else. I'm looking you know what's you know what's jumping out to me? No, I was gonna pick one of yours. To, oh, okay. Sure. Yeah, I've been looking at it. What is Time Patrol Bon? Um It's an anime. 
Do you? That makes sense. No, uh, Doraemon. Yes, that's like the kind of story of seasons thing, right? It has that game, and it's like the cart. It's like the anime. What Doraemon is like a blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a story of seasons crossover. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, he's like a. It's an extremely popular anime manga character. Um, this is just a different story by that same author. Oh, okay. Uh, he just and it's so it's a an older manga that recently got turned into an anime, a new anime. Nice. And I watched like the first episode. Um, and it's so it's fine. It didn't it didn't super <laughs> grab me, but it's good. Okay. What's the what's it's, the premise? You know, weird. It's um. trying to like the because it's it's like this character's basically there is a time patrol that like corrects thing if something goes wrong in time or something but they can't and like stuff happens and our main character he's like supposed he should be like deleted because he's like seen too much or whatever Uh, Um, but then they realize oh oh when he grows up he becomes an important person, and so important people they can't do anything with. So instead, they recruit him to join them. Basically, nice. Um, and uh, it's just weird tonally because it feels like overall it feels like it's it would it skews younger, but then there's just some content in there that's like. <laughs> No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, like yeah. when the the main character accidentally bad. results in his friend like falling out the window and like smashing, like splattering on the sidewalk. God damn! You know, pool of blood. <laughs> Jesus. And that's like, I mean, that it gets undone, but like it's still visually that happens. Um, that's insane. So and then, like, oh, I, I think I watched two episodes because I think this. And then the second one, like, they're they're like rescuing this old lady in like the wake of the like nuclear bomb attacks on Japan. Oh, but now there's and now there's going to be a tsunami, and they have to get her out. Like, but and everything's and it's dealing with that stuff. It's just like historical and educational in a way that feels more kiddy, but it's just weird. It's just a, it's just in a weird spot and it didn't it like, it's good, but, uh, it didn't completely hook me. I would say. Gotcha. It was interesting. I mean, the, yeah, you know. the manga is from like the started in the late seventies. It looks like. Okay. So it has like an older, the older art style. That was kind of why it appealed to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To check out the the anime keeps keeps that. Yeah, the anime has the same okay, art okay. style as oh, the that's manga. Sick. Yeah, I mean that would grab me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it's on that Netflix. I think it's all. Oh, okay, okay. Damn, I could check it out. Yeah, it came out on the the second of May. It's like twelve episodes. Okay. It was by it is done by Studio Bones. Give me uh <laughs> things that give me a Well, like they did Metallic Rouge that I just uh, checked out. Okay. Cowboy Bebop okay. Studio. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. But I don't think like the the animation here is anything that notable. It it's it need uses a lot of CG for vehicle stuff as like hmm you know, to cut corners and stuff. As you do. As you do. I don't know. But I'll, I have another anime that I also did crappy, but they were things I watched and I wrote them down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to talk about the other one now because it's, it's also small, which is Kaiju number eight. Yeah, I was wondering about that one too. I'm like, Kaiju, go on. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the premise of 
of this is our main character is like part of the cleanup squad for after like a kaiju gets murdered and then there's a big mess and so you gotta clean it up yeah um and he he and his then they're, they're like flashbacks to him and his childhood friend where like their city their like town they grew up in was destroyed by a kaiju and they promised to like you know join the kaiju destruction squad or whatever and beat kaiju and now she's like the best kaiju slayer in the world he (laughs) didn't he didn't make it into the that squad he's in the so he's in the cleanup squad as one as instead and he's feeling a little you know unfulfilled in life or whatever yeah um my problem with the show is it's too stupid oh (laughs) <laughs> okay <laughs> it like in what like way? too many like oh smelly poop jokes and like there was just there's a joke so then the thing is like various circumstances by the end of the first episode our hero is turned into a kaiju i was gonna say um just based off of your description, I'm like, okay, so either he realizes kaiju are good for some reason or, like, something along. Mm. Okay, I, I count that. Yeah. I was in the ballpark. Yeah. It's like, he's, like, in a hospital bed after surviving a kaiju attack. And then this, like, fly thing merges with him and he's, like, <laughs> a little kaiju. Okay. Um, and then there's just a, like, there's, like, a joke of, like like weird stuff's happened to him as he's running along. He's like changing sizes and getting big. And then there's just like stuff squirting out his nipples. And it was just like, this is too much. I, you lost me. Just like, it's, it's, yeah, that's, it's uh, like, that's... and like characters like yelling too much. Like just, it's sense of humor. Yeah. Did yeah. not vibe oh, with fuck. me. I hit my desk at all. <laughs> yeah. Fuck anime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, yeah no, just, sounds, it was comedy that didn't work for me. Sounds awful. <laughs> but those nice. are my my anime watches. Nice. Um, I got back into a, an anime, a little bit. I'm poking sure. at it. I shouldn't say get back. Like I haven't. It's a thing that I turn on once in a while, along with uh, Urusei Yatsura remake, which mm-hmm. I'll not be talking about here. Um, yeah. I got back into uh, Furin a little bit, mm-hmm. um, because I discovered I decided on a whim since I had it downloaded to check out the dub. They didn't look. Is it a great dub? I don't know. I don't have a lot like my <laughs> fucking my uh, um, benchmarks for anime dubbing are like Dragon Ball, which is. Mm-hmm something else entirely you know and like Mm. sailor moon which is bad in my i have no nostalgia for it so like that doesn't hit at all Mm. um but whether it's good or bad the important thing is that they decided to give freerin like a full-on like mommy voice like there's this there's if you fucking type like dub freerin voice on youtube it's like the first clip that comes up and it's her like fucking just a little too breathy, like telling uh, one of the characters, "Like, well done, good job, you did so well." And I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> it's just, like it's just fucking ridiculous. It, it it's well done. Like it's not just a meme. I do think it's pretty good, but it's it's just different enough to like interest me when. I've caught up on that manga and the the anime itself wasn't really it wasn't giving me enough extra to like keep watching it and that has made mm-hmm. it it like pushed it over the edge for me of being something sure. different. Um yeah, so that was <laughs> that was funny. Uh and then just my other little thing with Furin is my worst case scenario happened. Um they introduced <laughs> like 12 characters in two pages and now I'm having a <laughs> lot less fun um oh, that's and like that's funny. there's a dude that like they're talking about and like seems pretty important and i have no idea who the fuck it is and i'm like did i miss something here like he just got introduced and now like 
there's all this stuff and like I checked out the Reddit to see if there was anything I was missing and people are talking about like what they think his angle is and like, oh, I think, well, he's like this. And since he's like this, we're probably going to see this. I'm like, what the fuck are you? He was introduced two pages ago. (laughs) What do you mean he's like this? So I'm, and it's gotten into like kind of political. recognize the archetype. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah, I I guess, yeah. And, like, it's a little, there's, like, some political intrigue, and I'm just, that is so fucking not what this is about. It's like we were talking with um, Delicious and Dungeon, and you have your gimmick, and at a certain point, you need to merge your gimmick with, like, an overarching plot and make it bigger. Mm -hmm. And if this is what that is, it's going terribly for me, personally. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just a complete, like, the last three-ish chapters i guess Uh, for anyone else who's caught up it's like this current arc whenever that started um complete and total whiff i do not care and i want to get out of here as soon as possible (laughs) maybe something will change and we'll get like some nuggets of something that'll pique my interest again but it's just yeah as soon as they did like eight back-to-back panels listing names i was like this is it's over just yeah, I'm just super cursed. <laughs> no, uh, having just uh, delicious and dungeon is like put fear in on the super back burner for me because I don't want. It's like not fair to whatever that show is to compare it to another series that has some similar ideas and is like fantasy in that way um, to me because I like delicious and dungeon too much. Oh, see, I don't even. I don't even really compare them. In my head, I guess, yeah. but that makes that makes sense. I I got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, like, but like like the premise of Fearin, like it's it's a tiny idea that is also in Delicious and Dungeon. That's oh, like the, sure, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's there. Well, um, the thing is, we finished, like, and also it's like I'm so. It just reminds me. I'm like I'm so glad I got into Delicious and Dungeon after it was over. <laughs> Oh, dude! And I could just totally. do it. Totally. I was. A, I was. <laughs> the fact about that fearing say, isn't over is also another thing that I'm like, eh, I'm in dude, rush. I was about to say I I caught up on this latest arc after mm-hmm. we finished Delicious in Dungeon. <laughs> so like, mm-hmm. of all the thing, I would I was just you know that hurt it a lot more. Maybe if yeah. we had if I hadn't started that and I caught up, I'd be like, okay, this is whatever, but. Now I know what good shit tastes like. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just, Delicious and Dungeon is fucking perfect. It's not fair. Dude, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's, rid- it's ridiculous. Uh, we can we can hop back to you, but I do kind of have a segue for that a little sure, bit. Sure, if, if, if you have a segue. There was something else that introduced a lot of characters that did hit for me. It was more smut. (laughs) Dude, I swear to God, I just was like trying to check out a thing. And it ended up being like 150 chapters. And it's not my fault. I just wanted to read a little smut. Just a tiny, just one little, one little as a treat. And then it turned into a whole thing. It's called Home for Horny Monsters. You can read it for free uh, by chapter at uh, literatica.com. It started out as like the author, want, like this dude inherits a house from his great aunt who just died and that he'd never met. And it turns out the house, like he... he uh, jerks off in a bathtub to save a water nymph and then it goes from there and you're like meeting all these monster girls basically she wrote like five chapters and that was like her plan was i'm gonna write five chapters of this thing and like it's silly and it's smut first but like she had some little nuggets of world building in there and people really liked this story so she like she was like, I have more ideas if you guys want to read it. And then it's like 145 chapters later or whatever. And gotcha. it's like fucking, I was wondering why I was liking it so much. Like there's all the, there, we're meeting new characters pretty frequently. 
Um, the smut does at po- at a certain point it like gets to more plot than than <laughs> smut. At, but for what it is, I think it's well done. Like if you're going to make sex the focal point of your magic adventure story, that can go real wrong, and I think it doesn't. She does she does a pretty good job at like making it relevant without making it too like we need to bang right now or the world ends like it's 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 better than that <laughs> but uh-huh. i was i was wondering why i liked it so much like what was cuz i burned through i read there's a uh, 10 novels i read them in 11 days i fucking smashed this shit um i realized it's the dude the main character who falls into this he's just fucking goku it's just Goku. What does he do? He powers up. How does he power up? By occasionally having sex. Yes. But it has the element like there's a there is an Eve, there's a antagonist. He beats the antagonist. He generally he outsmarts them. He is weaker than other people, at least early on. And he just like he outwits some people in in good ways. And then he fucking brings them onto the team every time. And sometimes they don't like, you know, they're like kind of the anti-hero, but then they like fucking come around or whatever. And it's so sick. It's just, it, you love to see it. Cause everyone else is like, what are you doing? Like she wanted to murder us. He's like, yeah, but like I kicked her ass. <laughs> Let her try whatever. So there's a shitload of that going on. And then, like, uh, it hits the... I don't know if they... Tr- I don't know if she has seen Dragon Ball. I don't know if she intentionally did, like, a mirror of the... Um, at the end of the Tournament of Power, remember how Jiren is, like, fucking beside himself, wondering how Goku is so strong? And Goku's like, it's not just me, bitch. Like, look at all these people with me. <laughs> like, I didn't do this myself. Um... Basically, that happens, like, verbatim. When, like, dude is like, how the fuck did you get so strong so fast? And he's like, I'm not that strong. I surround myself with strong people. Get fucked and get out of my house. (laughs) So it just, like, it was just hitting those notes very well. I mean, those just shown, like, shonen tropes. Yeah, sure, but I ain't seen any other shonen. (laughs) Like, yeah, I've seen Dragon Ball. it's anime. <laughs> yeah, I don't watch fucking anime. <laughs> I watch... Does the know. main character know what kissing is? If if <laughs> yes, then that's not Goku. <laughs> but he's allowed to know what fucking is. Because Goku canonically yeah. fucks, but does not yeah. kiss. Does not kiss. No <laughs> kissing. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, it was... Uh, it's also not done, unfortunately, but I think there's like another two books that she has planned or something. But uh mm. it just fucking hit friendship, power ups, a little bit of fun shit on the side, decent characters, good plot, good good world building. I don't know. It's all there. Not for you <laughs> but for other people. All right, I've got here's my uh transition. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm going to talk about something you're not going to care about. <laughs> Try me. Uh I watched all of Twin Peaks the Return. Wow, I'm already asleep. Just <laughs> season 3 of Twin Peaks made way later. Um context question. Yes. When do uh, what's the gap between the the seasons? Uh when did Twin Peaks end? Cuz I know I saw you talking about it a little bit. I just didn't I didn't know it even existed. So Twin Peaks ran from 1990 to 1991 and Twin Peaks the Return was 2017, right? It's 25 years later. God damn. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a hell of a spread. Yeah, and there was a movie Firewalk with Me in '92. Okay, 
Which is like a prequel. No sleep. Gotcha. Um, so this is this is series was created by Mark Frost and David Lynch, you know, mm-hmm. of Mulholland Drive. Yeah, I'd, I'm which familiar. Is, you know, well, I, I'm, I don't expect you'd ever fucking watch this. Because <laughs> let me tell you, the thing about Twin Peaks The Return is it's extremely David Lynch making the show he wanted to make. <laughs> like, he just got to do what he wanted to do. Is and, it better uh, than Mulholland Drive? No. So I should watch. <laughs> anyway, go on, go on. <laughs> and that's, like, my main takeaway is, like, you know, David Lynch's... It feels like, for me, it feels like this is David Lynch playing the hits. Like, doing, like, a lot... The, it's not these aren't really new ideas for him that are thing it's him doing ideas he's done before but just you know as a new season of Twin Peaks or whatever like a new season of television yeah um, it doesn't feel super inventive in that way even though it's like you know doing stuff um, it's very different than seasons one and two of Twin Peaks um, but you know, and it's it's a it's a weird thing. It's hard it's hard to describe it, honestly. Other than it's like extremely David Lynch stuff. Like it is more David it is more David Lynch doing David Lynch stuff than it is another season of Twin Peaks. Yeah. Um, and so the thing I also did when I before I watched this, I rewatched the last episode of Twin Peaks. Which like so the second the second season I at like the end of Twin Peaks it's kind of rough and I and part of what doesn't interest me about it is because of all the all the there was like drama around the network and like them making them solve the mystery and then pushing them into time slots that all hurt the ratings where David Lynch kind of walked away from the show for a bit and then he came back for the last episode. And his influence was, like, really important to making the show entertaining to me because otherwise it's just kind of a a soap opera. Um, and the last episode of Twin Peaks is fucking unbelievably good to me. It's, like, really fucking cool and has some great weird imagery. Um, and I th- And part of what makes it so good is because of the era it's from and like the way they have to do practical effects. Like there's a shot of this character taking another character's soul out of their body. And there's like this, they do it with like a practical fire effect appearing behind them. And it's fucking sick. Like they, the, there's a part where they he's walking into the, the, the black lodge where he like, he's walking through a velvet curtain, but they've like put th- the physical velvet curtain on their woods, their woods set. So he's like the person, like the lighting is right. And they're like walking into this thing. Whereas like, if you were making that scene now, you would do it like digitally and it would look like shit. So yeah, like yeah. part of my problem with twin beaks, the return is just because it's a showtime show made in 2017. A lot of the digital, like photography and like tricks to it just don't hit for me in a way that the best stuff of original twin beaks did like, and there there's like an episode where he's like doing his, uh, 2001, a space odyssey thing. And it's, it's like the, like the episode that's like the most lynchy thing, but like hardcore fans fucking love it. And normal people are like, I'm, I'm done watching this or whatever. (laughs) <laughs> but to me, it just like it didn't quite hit, just because the the visuals of it, I just didn't think were that good because they were digital effects. Um, and there's just also a thing with like with modern TV of like there are these night scenes that unless you're like viewing conditions are perfect, are kind of fucking illegible. Like I accidentally downloaded the show in 720. 
And on that episode, I realized it because I couldn't fucking see shit. Like the bit rate was too low <laughs> on the dark scenes to fucking make anything out. <laughs> and I had to go find a 4K version of that episode so I could fucking see anything. <laughs> like it's just it just wasn't. It, like I could it compared it to like if you're making a piece of music, it sounds great on like high end equipment. But in your fucking your car stereo, it it doesn't sound oh, good. <laughs> God, so many times, dude. <laughs> like, that's there's just some thing. of that going on with the 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 effects. Or making a game, also. Sure. Um. And like, ultimately, I just think thematically, it's just. It's like the whole season is like drawing out stuff that I think is in there in that last episode of the original show. And it's just like more convinced, like watching this, this whole new season was more like, yeah, that last episode of the original show was really fucking great and dark and fucked up. <laughs> um, and this is like good and fucked up and dark, but it's not it didn't hit. It doesn't hit me as hard, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I had a great I had a good time. I enjoyed watching it um but there are people but like it i would say it was kind of overhyped which is weird because also you if i think about it like it's just hardcore twin peaks fans who fucking or lynch fans who really loved it it wasn't actually super well watched at the time partly because it was like partly going like at the it aired at like it's so funny. The original show got fucking like crushed because they put it up against Cheers. Oh, they were just like, <laughs> yeah, like like the the premiere of Twin Peaks. It was it was it was like one of the most watched episodes of television ever, um, and it kind of <laughs> undid it. Like the series was fucking haunted by that because it like the networks kept putting it up against. Then put it up against Cheers, and then threw it in the garbage, and put it on on like Saturday nights because the ratings were good enough. But it was like so you never got to find its lane. Uh, and then on Showtime, it was like airing at the same time as Game of Thrones in Game of Thrones season seven. <laughs> yeah, that would. Uh... <laughs> it's just like you know, it's like how <laughs> decades later, same problem. <laughs> Um. Also, and also watch like they got like a lot of last performances from the actors who were in the original show. Like a lot of people who were in that show like died like the within the year of it coming oh. out. Um, it's a little grim. So that's like a weird. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a weird thing about watching it. Just like. Well, watching it now, like, so many of these people are dead. Um, but, yeah, but, like, I, I enjoyed it. There's a part, there's a whole episode called Don't Die, in which a character tells another character, it's explicitly the statement, don't die. Like, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. It wasn't uh, my favorite thing I've ever watched or anything. It was just, it was pretty good. Yeah. And it more convinced me that the finale of Twin Peaks was perfect, actually. Everyone who has said it was unfulfilling or whatever was just wrong. Because guess what? The season, the finale of The Return is just as unfulfilling. But, uh... In a, in a way that's more like, yeah, this is this is the kind of dark, fucked up ending that Lynch was going for anyway. It was never, we were never going to get a happy ending out of this thing. Yeah. So that's my twin peaks, the return thoughts. Nice. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, you can go into more of your... Because, like, I just have my one little thing. And then, All like, right, I'll talk about... And, the and then we're part. into our group stuff. Yeah, I'll talk about the other... I think... I'll talk about the other TV show. 
I've watched, which I watched fucking yesterday, <laughs> as I watched the first two episodes of The Acolyte, because that's all it's out yet, uh, the new Star Wars show. Yeah, what do you what do you think? So here's the premise of The Acolyte from the first mm. scene. What if Star Wars, but it's the Matrix, and it has the Matrix-style fighting? Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, I read. I read that that happens. Yeah, that's it. Well, because literally, it's assassins come to kill Carrie and Moss. Like it's the most on the nose. Like this is what we're the statement of intent. Uh, mm-hmm. This is what we're doing. Uh, but to me, that's what if Star Wars, but the fights were good. I'm on board. I'm in. I'm, that's fine. So let's let's see where let's see what happens. And like it's all I'm only two episodes in, so I don't know if it's gonna where it's gonna go or if it's gonna be fulfilling at the end. But like that premise, I'm in. I'm in. That's very funny. I'm I'm so curious to see what people say. Because one of the only things I've seen about this, aside from like some middling reviews and people just being angry who seem angry at anything, was one dude who's like he was so specific reviewing it and he was like episode three for anyone who's already like kind of not liking current star wars stuff like episode episode three will put every piece of post trilogy star wars media into the ground for you like you're done you're gonna see this and it's gonna kill it all for you and i'm like okay i'm like that sounds bad <laughs> but like well, obviously you do you can say yet. why i can't don't even it was a reviewer it was like a yeah yeah so that's why I'm curious to see what like people say. <laughs> I don't it's think, like, I but I know. don't think that's fucking possible. I think I that guy's just I a know. fucking idiot. I want to know though. He was so fucking specific <laughs> that like episode nah, one. I don't. Like, that guy's just an asshole. Like, but he was because, saying, but like because episode, this is such a different thing from fucking Andor. Like, he's just never gonna. That's but never his, gonna be his true. review for one and episode one and two were like, yeah, it's whatever. But then episode three, it went from like whatever to like this is the worst piece of Star Wars media to exist or whatever. And I'm just whatever. like, I'm just so fucking curious. It's not possible. I want to know. You got to report back. Okay. I'm just telling you, I. It, I I'm actually not think that's impossible. Hold up. I'm not impossible. saying I believed him. <laughs> like, hold up. I'm just saying I read and I was like. This guy seems like uh, he's had a hell of a time. I want to see the thing that made him this way. Well, then you watch it. I don't. I don't want to watch I, it. I'm not watching two episodes <laughs> and then to watch the third one. That's insanity. You're already deep. <laughs> two episodes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not motivated by some jackass. Just, but care. you're yeah, you're not. You're already watching it. Are you not going to watch episode three? Because <laughs> it's sounding now like you're... <laughs> I am going to watch episode three. See, you're already you're already doing it. Pick me up. Okay. Uh, could you pick me up some milk while you're at the store? Here's my here's my guess. It will be fine. Okay. <laughs> I guess. don't. I whatever. don't in any like. It's, there's no way it's going to be, like, the worst fucking Star Wars thing It's or not possible. I am curious to see if it's just, like, a thing that's a whiff. You know? Like, sometimes shit whiffs. Whatever. Or if it's just, like, a hyper-specific thing. Like, if it's something that he just hated personally and, like, some people are going to think it's miserable, but other people are like, eh, whatever. I don't know. People have weird hang-ups on Star Wars that I do not. So. Yeah, sure, but, like... What was it? Was it episode? Was it actually like episode three of uh, season one of Batman Beyond that I was like, this is actually like the worst episode of a show I've seen in like <laughs> a long time, <laughs> like that. And that was for me. That was my personal bullshit. The difference is I'm I can separate that and recognize it. <laughs> and I didn't say that the episode killed Batman for me. Yeah. Oh, it's good. I mean, I'm glad you're, you're you're liking it so far. Because like a big part of what I don't like about a lot of the Disney, Marvel, and Star Wars stuff is their action has been mush. 
Um, and like yeah. having actual fight choreography. <laughs> Imagine. Like martial arts on screen is like way more visually compelling and like props up a huge part of like there are people being filmed doing a thing like thumbs up like this is improvement <laughs> this is only better yeah 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 no I, I feel you on that one like the the story is like you know I'm not i'm not super invested in it or anything yet but not From bad. a purely story perspective, based on the bits I know, I like zero care. The thing that the thing that mildly like it didn't bring me enough into the fold to like start it, but just the the difference in tone, like the trailer and the difference in tone, and it just seemed like such a stark contrast, and that was interesting. It's not a stark contrast. It's just it's fucking not, Star no. Wars. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, if there's good fights, like that's that's still like that's a yeah. that's a thing to pull me, you know. It's more it's more normal Star Wars than fucking Andor was, I'd say. Well, yeah, my understanding it's is that there they're are Jedi lightsabers running. in it. Yeah, yeah. they are lightsabers <laughs> and they're Jedi. I mean, just the and fact there's that like, there's lightsabers. Like, is... like the big the big difference is we're actually we're spending a lot. It's more like it's probably closer to like video game Star Wars, just in the sense that we're. We're spending a lot of time with the bad guy in this, really. Like, we're getting scenes that are from her point of view. Mm -hmm. Um, She's the title character, the Acolyte. Like, um, And then we're, like, cutting back and forth between her and then the Jedi and her sister, her twin sister. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the, the whole thing. So like getting getting that spending that much time with the the villain where we're we're watching her like tr- go going on her quest and she's kind of the driving force and stuff like that's interesting like that's I'm I'm interested to see where it goes you know yeah I got you. But I don't, you know, I don't. <laughs> I think the big thing is the difference in action. I think everything else, it's like, whatever. Um, do you know how many episodes it's slated for? I don't know I offhand. Know. Okay, I have no idea. I'm gonna guess twelve. The acolyte. Mm. Come on, baby. Eight. Ah, fuck. I could have accepted like ten. Like ten is close. Eight's too far. How long? How long were they? An hour? Oh, or not quite, or whatever. They weren't like twenty minutes. minutes. Yeah, but they. Yeah, okay. Well, they're, I'm just saying, like for eight episodes, they're not like twenty minutes or whatever. No. I guess. I don't know. Hmm. They didn't they weren't they're not like full hours. Yeah, yeah. But you know, just like more than the half hour time slot or whatever. Yeah, they're they're a digital show, so who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah, how yeah. Long they, they feel like being. Well look, sometimes they're however long they feel like being, and that's way too long. <laughs> I mean, also, it was a two-parter to start the season. Like, Oh, okay. Okay. Like, they aired two episodes at once. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I don't know. Anyone being too fucking high on it one way or the other is crazy. It's whatever. It's fine. It's a TV show. I'm going to watch it, and I'm going to fucking... I'm going to have strong opinions. I don't even know if I could muster up a strong opinion for anything Star Wars at this point. Like, I just can't. Um, except for, like, the shit I already have strong opinions about. It's much better than Obi-Wan so far. Nice. 
But it's just a kind of, it's like just its own thing. Like it's not <laughs> like the fact that it's, you know, a hundred years before anything we cared about, like just like makes it have way less weight on its shoulders. Like it can kind of just be its own thing. Yeah. See, that's why like narratively, like it's, it's still too close or whatever for me. Cause like, I don't know. It's whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine the because whole. the characters are not tied up into. Like, that's the characters good. Can can be their own thing. Right? Yes. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. What that. Ab- that's what uh, okay. Like okay. Okay. I was gonna say like the like, like we the... still have like familiar of like the Republic as like a a thing that exists, but the bigger thing to me is these characters can go through their own fucking thing and not yes. be beholden to okay other shit. No, that that part I agree with entirely. Which is like what okay, stuff that like, like Obi Wan is fucking sinking in. <laughs> like the, <laughs> the space for him to do anything as a character is so fucking small. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that I absolutely feel. Yeah. I mean that's also why I want them to go like we keep we keep looking back. I want them to push further. I want to go forward in the timeline. For the for the same reason ultimately or I if you're going back far enough like this, that's okay too. But we've just been fucking waddling around the prequels, sequels, original trilogy and the like show we're just in that same space and everything's tied and it's like ugh. Yeah. I mean, most of my mech with Star Wars was production stuff of the getting sick of the volume and <laughs> the way that sure. shit looked. And oh, yeah. They're, yeah. they're like getting all hung up in fucking Clone Wars lore or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's really when, like, yeah, the, the extent to which I stopped caring. So, this is not tied into any of that stuff. The, there was a cool fight at the beginning of it that's. That's enough for me. Hell yeah! Cool. Using, I mean, Star, Star Wars, Wars cool music. Fights. It's using it's using fucking wipes. <laughs> nice. Just like <laughs> we're, we're Star Wars. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have a title crawl, but it has like a little text setup that's like a title crawl, but less. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's like three. It's like three. Three sentences, just setting up. This is the plot. This is where we are. This is what's happening. Gotcha. Here's Carrie Ann Moss doing <laughs> a fight and getting killed. You know, um, uh, I also watched the... something. Sure. I watched you play a bit of Mechabellum. <laughs> it's true yeah yeah I, I pulled it in <sighs> mecha bellum got me back in with its new mode where it's a four player free for all with a with a uh also ai controlled units in the center that you have to fight through and you get the no the more you kill like the more gold you get for the next round but you only score points if your units like survive the whole the whole round and it's 10 rounds skirmish yeah skirmish well and it's sick so for breaks people's computers which they're working on apparently (laughs) (laughs) so for anyone who doesn't know um mecha bellum had a four player thing before and that's 2v2 and it's mid It's mid yeah. as hell because it's literally just w- the one v one setup, but you play next to the other duo or whatever. So like, yeah. I would be me and Hank are sitting at the table across from each opponent, and we each just play against each other normally, and then any leftovers go from the fight go to fight each other if it's opposing mm-hmm. teams. That was it. <laughs> That was literally fucking it. And it was yeah. so 
mid. Still is it. That mode still exists. It still is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, as a four-player thing, like... I watched... Dude, I watched you play this, and it looked sick. I'm like, this is such yeah. a cool setup. That's such a good they, way to do it. they introduce, like... The, like, the AI will get, like, these mega units that are, like, either, like just just way bigger than normal versions of units or and they'll have like way more abilities um and it's just, that's just cool <laughs> like there's a lot about this mode that's just sick like there's this giant battle that's like basically too fucking powerful for your computer to look at without the frame rate tanking because <laughs> <laughs> there's so much going on at once is like these four fronts of fighting are happening at the start yeah um but then there's stuff like where you can get like hacker units and like take over these mega units and now this mega unit is yours. Like that's so fun. That shit looks <laughs> so good. When you fucking it's took just... over the super chonky AI <laughs> unit and then he's just yeah. crushing everything. Yeah, oh. that's it's just rule of cool. It like got me completely back in. It was like, this is just sick. Even if it's like fucked up in certain ways, like it's just which it actually kinda is like I actually think it's pretty fucking good. Um, it's just sick. Most of yeah. it. Uh, before anything else, it's just fucking <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, they said they're gonna be introducing another unit soon, which is like a sandworm mech. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're, like, working on that four-player mode and getting performance on it better and stuff. Nice. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm back in on Mechabellum because this is like, that mode's just super fun and cool. I, uh, I would be back, but, um, I don't think that would run well on Steam Deck. It already <laughs> didn't really run well on Steam Deck. So yeah, <laughs> I have to wait for those performance improvements to like hella get performance there. improvements. Yeah. I hope they I hope they make adjustments to the 2v2 at some point. Cuz like my thing that I wanted was like a big battlefield and then some other shit. I didn't want two separate battlefields. That's mm -hmm. boring. No, like the the like the like everyone's fighting over this single middle square thing. Yeah. Is so good. The the interaction like, you actually have interaction yeah. with all the people you're playing with yeah. in a way that you don't in the 2v2. And you still can fuck people by putting things behind them. <laughs> yeah, the fact that the it's a... dude watching people fucking flank you. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's if more questionable, like, actually helping you than it is just, like, crab bucketing someone. Uh, it's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. It's good shit, for sure. And it and like in a mode like that, the the stuff they did with like where you you'll get like one of your turns where you get cards, it'll be like free units. Mm -hmm. Like I think that stuff all feels way makes more sense. It feels way better in the as like this random stuff happening to you um, in the that multiplayer mode than in the, like a one on one. Where you're like, just trying to beat this one person. Yeah. Like, it gets past that, like, competitive drive thing of like, no, it needs to be more balanced. Like, no, it needs to be more fucked up and weird. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, so. Oh, and, it, was, uh, it was good yeah. shit. So, and I, it's like, and it's been a good way for me to, I feel more, like, the th Playing the one-on-one, -on -one, I felt like, I just don't know all these new units. But this mode is, like, way more inviting in that, like, well, just, like, fucked up shit's gonna happen. And I'm probably not gonna win anyway, so. Like, there's three just other send people it. here. What do we do? It Send it. And so I've, like, it's been a very good onboarding again into learning all the, the new units. And just, like, they'll show up. As, like, the, the AI is controlling them, so I'll at least get to see what they do without even having to either buy them or <laughs> my opponent, like, murdering me with them, whatever. They just, like, show up for a round and then move on you, to something else. 
you have one more solo topic, but there's three other people here I'm probably going to get fucked is a pretty good segue to Mahjong. <laughs> 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 like perfect Hell yeah yeah that's very uh-huh. funny yeah <laughs> no i've been i have been playing those two games mecha bellum and mahjong soul like back to back while like do a match of one and then switch over to the other um me and hank both independently downloaded <laughs> mahjong soul within i mean i think i when did you download it when we when we first talked did you had it downloaded for a while or did you like just get it at that point? I if think you can I recall. just gotten it. Okay, so I probably downloaded it first. It was within like a week though, and like I didn't do anything with it. I took the tutorial, but yeah, like just completely independently, we both grabbed it, and then you mentioned mm-hmm. it. I'm like, wait, Mahjong Soul? Was it Mahjong Soul? <laughs> like, fuck, let's play Mahjong, <laughs> and we did. It's true. That Hank happened. got his fucking revenge for getting absolutely rocked in Hanafuda. <laughs> I did get destroyed in Hanafuda. <laughs> I'm still real uh, shit at Mahjong, dude. Like, it's it's a lot. Yep. The um, game's complicated. But it's very fun. Yes. It's, uh, it's simple. I mean, like, at its core, it's simple, right? Which... What's what makes it fun? Yeah, it's like more complicated gin rummy or whatever, like playing with regular, with like fifty two card deck, whatever. Yeah, or, I mean, with like it also book. reminded me of uh, like cribbage. Sure, I don't you know. We're just trying cribbage, so you're trying to get you're right. trying to get your hand to do stuff. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Like every card game. Mm-hmm. Reminded me a lot of Go Fish. Nah, it's, uh, I mean, it's also just the, the way that the points work, right? Like, mm-hmm. if you just draw what you need to win, everybody gives you some points. But if someone lays down something that gives you the win, <laughs> you just take all of it directly from them. Which, uh... Really fucking fun fact for anyone who doesn't know. Um, more than one person can win at once. And if two people win on someone else playing a tile, they both take that person's points. <laughs> I've got fucked. Uh, if people can go into the negative, that happens. My God. Usually. Yeah. We uh we played an, a game against when we play so when when me and Hank play it has to be against AI, or if we found like two other people, but like you can't queue up in like ranked or or anything like as a duo. So uh, we were playing against AI, and I like sent one to the fucking shadow realm. <laughs> I had like a crazy uh, amount of points. <laughs> uh, so far in the negative. <laughs> they were wildly in the negative. <laughs> that shit was incredible. Yeah. Shit is. Also, you played like a hand that had like a special animated thing. That I've never yeah, seen I got. Again. <laughs> yeah, I had. I, th- I assume it must happen for a couple because it was. I had the four wind. I had four winds involved. I had like three triples and then like a pair. Yeah. I assume there's probably one for like the when you get all of the dragons. I would assume mm-hmm. there's one for that or something. Yeah. The super high end. Point yeah, the, the Gucci. The Gucci points. Not the basic bitch, no sim or all simples, rather. Yeah. No honor. No honor. Half the time when we play, I lose because I'm like, this is it. I'm getting all <laughs> pairs. And then I don't. I just don't. No. Whereas I'm, I'm probably too often still just playing for, like no honor hands. Yeah. Um. But. We just gotta get something down. Yeah. 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 Uh. Yeah. It's just. It's been fun. I yeah, got into it it's... from because I was watching a bloody running run. Uh, Wheeler does the show 
uh, is this your card? And we'll try out different card games. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and he was doing like Mahjong for like three weeks in a row on that. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. And then I, I like, I know that I like double checked, like just doing my own searching for what people said was the best Mahjong game. And they also said Mahjong Soul. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, because there's a, a there's like a Mahjong Gacha also that's on Steam, which Mahjong Soul isn't isn't on Steam. Mahjong but, um, Soul apparently is that... on Steam. Oh, is it? But it's only the Chinese servers. Oh, okay. I believe yes. Okay, I just because it's the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the website, then there's the mobile version. Yeah. And I think there's yeah. some discrepancy there too. We're on the so, we're like, on the best for player base. Yeah, Mahjong Soul is like it's a free to play mobile game that that you can also play on computer. But it's a gotcha. But the gotcha is not, doesn't get in the way of just playing Mahjong. So yeah, it's pretty you ideal. Can, you can literally just play Mahjong with it and never yeah. ever engage because like the only thing the gotcha gives you is um, uh, cosmetics and yeah. anime girl avatars. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, it's kind of, like, it, it, it's pretty perfect um, for what I want to yeah. have. The gotcha. And the, the gotcha stays out of my way. Mm -hmm. um, but appar and apparently there is there is a different Mahjong gotcha that's on Steam. But everything I, I saw about that was that it was pretty good for onboarding you. But it, eventually, the way its matchmaking worked and, like, it, like, doesn't give you enough points for getting third or something like people at high level found it way more annoying to like engage with. Whereas oh, like Mahjong soul was sure. good as like a newbie and at, at, at like high level. Yeah. Dude. I, fucking good for noobs. I feel like I'm in a fight cade server. <laughs> I'm at the bottom <laughs> level getting my ass handed to me. Like, okay. Novice is a pretty wide range. <laughs> Uh-huh. But someone did, someone pointed out. Uh, so the way I got into it was because the uh, fighting Discord I'm in, there's like a bunch of people who are just into it. <laughs> and who, mm -hmm. there are people who will play a fighter for like eight hours in a day or whatever and just get their ass kicked and not give a shit because like they're here to improve and they're going to get better. And then they get into Mahjong and they immediately, the salt just starts flowing. <laughs> Hell yeah very funny yeah and i've but, been uh, and like in the back of my head i had been wanting to get into mahjong for a long time like i'd sat down with a physical mahjong set once and like tried to teach myself the game with like no no <laughs> nobody there to <that laughs> help me at all yeah um and that was a different it was one of the versions of mahjong where you like you build the wall oh like, drawing right off, okay drawing off the wall which is, is okay. not this version yeah um. So that's also interesting, but just like a, a good digital version of Mahjong has just been a thing. Like I've been waiting for someone to like point me to one. Like not obviously I wasn't actively looking because I'd never done the the search of just what's the best digital version of Mahjong. <laughs> for, but um, yeah. Just now like that we finally have... being presented to me was like oh fucking finally hell yeah yeah. Now that we have Mahjong Soul, I'm annoyed that I can't find, like, the equivalent. Or I I can't find any consensus about the equivalent for Hanafuda. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I want I want to play both, because Hanafuda doesn't take quite as long. Yeah. Unless someone sets it to 12 rounds. <laughs> we were playing Hanafuda on uh, Clubhouse Games on Switch. Yes, which is apparently a, that's like a very good version. Apparently, yeah. But I like, mean, I don't. I want the. I don't want to bust out fucking, the switch every time. I mean, that makes fucking sense. Nintendo makes <laughs> made out of Buddha. Like that's the. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice. I'm gonna buy a deck from them. Yo, there's an Urusei Yatsura Hanafuda deck. Hell yeah! I'm pretty tempted, but I wouldn't want like. The traditional one too for yeah, learning yeah. purposes yeah they're not expensive no no i bought one off amazon 
I think like the first time we played it on Clubhouse Games. I was like, hell nice. yeah. You got your ass handed to you or like, I'm in. <laughs> well, I don't remember if you kicked my, like, I don't think you destroyed me when we played before. but I probably did. I don't remember. I you feel prob- like I realistically, remember. you probably kicked my ass. <laughs> that sounds like a, I feel like that's the more likely thing is I'm like, man, I've been rinsing the CPU at this game. This is great. And then Hank rolls in like, I've barely played. And then you just decimate me. <laughs> Yeah, Mahjong Soul is fucking good. Yeah, it's good shit. It's just, it's a good game. That is, <laughs> I'm still fucking learning. Like, there's just a lot oh, to yeah. know. Oh, God, yeah. I feel like I'm definitely, like, there's some piece of strategy I'm fucking missing. About when to yeah. go for something that's more points. Uh, maybe one yeah, day yeah, then. yeah. Someday, years from now, like maybe. Yeah. And the, it's still fun though. Yeah. Also, it's very funny that you can just go into ranked and just set it up to auto draw discard or whatever. <laughs> like you could just set that game up to just hope that you come in in a good place uh, by doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. It's a strat. Yeah. Just don't want to come uh, in last. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What do you want to? What do you want to hit next? Well, I have one more thing. That's just for me to talk about. Yeah. Do do that. Do that. And then we have the the Street Fighter Six patch. Uh, all right. I'm gonna talk about the StarCraft One versus StarCraft Two mod, where I've been watching, and there have been some fucking like prized tournaments to get pros to play it, which is really the the thing. Because apparently this mod's like kind of taken off in Korea became a thing so people they were like like the channel that runs like the big korean starcraft esports events ran like a tournament that was this this mod of starcraft 1 versus starcraft 2 where they've like just set up the starcraft 1 versions of the races in the starcraft 2 engine Mm-hmm. But like the gimmick of it that's gotten everyone hooked on it is like every every match it's a StarCraft two version of a race versus a StarCraft one version of a race. Um, nice. And part of the reason it's become it became so popular, like big in Japan in Korea, is because StarCraft one is more popular than StarCraft two. <laughs> <laughs> so like. Like, part of the balancing is, like, making StarCraft 1 pros play StarCraft 2. <laughs> like, it's an excuse to get them to play StarCraft 2, which they normally wouldn't do. So some of these, like, matches in this money tournament are, like, peop- these pros playing... These StarCraft 1 pros playing StarCraft 2, and they're just not that good at StarCraft 2. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're just like they're just like these. It's always weird because you're just like oh, that's he just forgot to macro. He's dead. <laughs> he was doing good, <laughs> but he's actually just fucking dead. <laughs> he, uh, he neglected very, his home base. Quick, uh, quick interruption. Um, yeah, if I if I disappear into the ether, it's because it's storming out, and I'm on satellite internet. Gotcha. <laughs> just anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go on. Uh, but yeah, cause, and like, because the other thing is like, people are still learning stuff about like how the the StarCraft One races work in the StarCraft Two engine, because some of them, like, just the changeover make makes them operate differently. Uh, stuff about like, like, in general, the StarCraft Two races are just better. Like, this mod is not balanced at all. Um. Because the StarCraft 2 races, they all have, like, these 
higher level macro mechanics of like these repeatable actions you're taking to like get to like give you st to make give you stuff to do because controlling your army is so much easier in StarCraft 2 compared to StarCraft 1. Mhm. Mm but like that that like supercharges their their econ in a way that the StarCraft 1 races can't really keep up with. Um but and there are like there are little things like the StarCraft 1 workers do work faster. <laughs> they get their minerals faster, but it doesn't I don't think it makes up for the the econ differences. Um, also, there's just like there are fucked up scouting units that just per <laughs> like we're like one unit will put on a ridiculous amount of early game pressure in StarCraft Two that uh, StarCraft One also can't deal with. <laughs> sure, and like your defensive options in StarCraft Two are much better overall. But the thing, so the things that are much better in StarCraft One are spells are way more powerful. They're like, they just, you're like activated abilities just do more stuff. They're just better because they're much harder to use in StarCraft 1. Like in StarCraft 1, you can't even, you can't queue up abilities. So if you have like an ability that locks down a unit, you'd have to like click it all those many times. Whereas in StarCraft 2, you can just like shift click a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Also, and also, because the pathing is so much better in StarCraft 2, units clump much easier. So all the AoE stuff from StarCraft 1 is also kind of busted. <laughs> They'll just do way more damage because all the enemy units are, like, clumped in ways that uh, are ridiculous. Yeah. Because, like, <laughs> like uh, units in StarCraft 1 are, like, little boxes that sometimes will even change shape as they walk. Um, and then they'll, like, confuse themselves about where they're trying to go. Whereas, like, units in StarCraft 2 are basically, like, droplets of water that flow around each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that was, like, one of the things. I watched a little of the Day 9 stuff. Uh, he, was, he was talking about it. Yeah. So they're just, like... So, like, Zerglings are just, like, absurd in StarCraft 2 in a way they're not. Mm -hmm. in, a, in, in a way, because they can, they just immediately will get around you and get good surface area of all these little little units in a way that they were, like, will get in each other's way more. Uh, yeah, in yeah. One. And it's just been, but, like, so overall, overall, though, like, just seeing these high-level players have to grapple with this stuff. It's like kind of like watching a new game because they just there's a lot that's unknown. There's a lot that's fucking broken. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> they're just like it, it has all these interesting corner cases and stuff to it that to me just makes it much more interesting than watching normal StarCraft 2. Because StarCraft 2 is the game where I'm like, eh, watching it, it can be a little boring um, to mm. me because there aren't enough hard edges. So, like, yeah. that's really been the thing, is, like, this has been a way of making StarCraft 2 much more interesting to watch to me. Um, while, you know, there's no ASL season for StarCraft 1 currently going on. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're, yeah, your off-season stuff. Yeah. It's always mm -hmm. nice to have. So it's it's just been fun. And, like... There's some stuff they should probably patch. Like, <laughs> like in particular, there the there's a unit, the Vulture, which in StarCraft One you can micro marker it in a way where like you you quick turn and shoot and then keep going because it's like a fast unit and you can just outrun Zerglings and kite them. And right now in the mod that you can't do that. Your Vultures just get fucking swarmed. You, if you try to turn uh, and shoot, they just, like, stop in a way that, like, just makes them die. And it's like, that that in, that one in particular just seems wrong. Because you're not able... Yeah. You're basically... You have less control over this unit than you should, based on how it's currently working. Um, yeah, then there's some other yeah. weird things of just, like, units being way bigger or smaller than it seems like they should be. Like, High Templar are just weirdly, like, huge... 
<laughs> Whereas like they're they're kind of a smaller unit in uh they were like one of the smallest units in StarCraft One. It's just funny. Just like per- stuffs in proportion to other stuff is just wonky. Mm-hmm. Um And it's just, you know, it's just weird that like it's taken this long for a mod like this to catch off of people putting putting StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2. Like, this has honestly been... One of my th- issues with StarCraft 2 was just... It's, like, mod... Cr- like, user-created content stuff never took off. Like, nothing in it ever seemed to, like, be interesting. Engaging with it always seemed super annoying, uh, like, to me on a user end. It's, like, navigating to the arcade menu just was not good um so it's just cool to me to finally see something taking off as like a user created starcraft 2 thing to like use that those tools and to make something cool so that's oh, yeah. also just a cool thing it's weird to me that it's taken this long but we finally finally a thing <laughs> and then you know Watching like casted matches of pros <laughs> playing this yeah. horse shit mod is just like this is <laughs> for money. Like it's just hell like, yeah. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. Hell yeah. Uh, so that's that. I think that's everything. But we can now go to yeah. Star. I mean, uh, Street Fighter. Yeah, I'm not even going to talk. I have, like, my one little thing left. Specifically okay. why Ben dislikes Antagonist sometimes, but honestly, oh. I forget, like, all of the specifically things that I was thinking <laughs> at the time. <laughs> that was that one was a while ago. I think, I think vaguely I realized that there was, like, other stuff, but it was something about, like, when it's a foregone... When I'm in a type of story where it's a foregone conclusion... That, like, the good guys are going to win. And the interactions between good guys and bad guys aren't very interesting. It just makes me think... And and my threshold for that is maybe different from some people, for sure. It just makes me be like, why the fuck are there bad guys here? Skip it. Like, I know how this is going to play out, and it's boring watching it play out. <laughs> like, what were you... Just, did you have, like, a thing meh. in particular you were... I think it was, um... Watching. I don't think I was watching anything. I think it might have been about the Home for Horny Monsters books. There was like one of the antagonists, but that was like <laughs> it might have been, I think it was early. She gets better at writing as she goes on. So it might have been one of the early ones where I'm like, you know, we could just not like we just I like him learning about that was the other thing about that series, by the way. It's very fish the out. The villains water. in this smut are so fucking the, boring. The, 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 <laughs> Well, no, like early on, like she heard the the villains were just like so straight up, like there was nothing to them. They were boring, and their motivations were boring, and it wasn't nothing. What nothing interesting was coming out of it. So I was like, you know, we were doing that thing where he was like learning about the world and the house and like fish out of water Some shit. Poorly and, like, written, we just go bad, back to that. <laughs> poorly written villains, not interesting. Yeah, that's that's why I don't need to talk about it that much either. It's like I don't like the villains when there's when they're garbage, I guess. Wow. You know, that's not as insightful as I thought it was. <laughs> but it's also uh, like they don't have to be super good if there's also if it's also the type of story where I don't know what way it's going to turn out, you know? Like maybe the villain, maybe like there's there's more at play and it's a more interesting dynamic, more so than an interesting villain. That's yeah. fine, but this it's like, come on, come on, it's smut. I know how this is gonna go. They're gonna win. And they're gonna smut. Fuck. This based on shonen tropes. <laughs> smut shonen based on shonen tropes. Yes. <laughs> like, what if Goku beat? Vegeta, and they fucked after, <laughs> just like in the fanfics. Well, Goku actually 
lost a bunch. It's one of his. Yeah, he loses. I mean, yeah. The good thing. This guy, takes, uh, this dude, his name is Mike. He takes some L's. Shit gets fucked. People, uh, people die. Um, yeah, that's yeah. My big, re my big, my big uh, epiphany. Damn, I hate things that are bad. <laughs> yeah, that's generally my, my, my <laughs> take on things. It's like, well, it wasn't necessarily like like high level that this sucks, but this instance sure wasn't interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't executed in a way that made it compelling. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Street Fighter patch. Yeah, happened. Do you want to? What are your thoughts on the patch? I mean, my <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> the patch is kind of fucking a wet fart. Like it's kind of it's nothing. mid as hell. <laughs> Like, I'm waiting for that game to fucking change, and they didn't change that game. I can't believe we waited a well, goddamn he, year. A well, year! Char like, characters I play, I'm like, this, I don't care about this. Yeah. No, it's, a. Uh, I think unless you're playing, apparently Zangief got, like, the juice. Like, he's scary now, <laughs> I guess. Um, But, like... Well, I actually, I wouldn't... I feel like I only played Akuma on the new. <laughs> I, uh, dude, that's, that's the thing. I will dude, say yeah, the thing. Playing. The only the only character I ever I've ever seen on the new patch has been Akuma. So, yeah, I guess I, I don't maybe know at this it point it's different. It's probably petered out a little at this point. Yeah, but because yeah, honestly, I was playing a lot days. more before the patch, and then the patch happened, and well, like I was so unimpressed. Um, oh, I. The day day zero and day one, I was playing the shit out of the pack. I went up a full rank on people who were playing Akuma but didn't know how to play Akuma. It was glorious. Well, well so that was my thing. Like before the patch, I switched characters. I started playing Jury because I like I did my placement matches with her and I placed into platinum instead yeah, of yeah. like doing my slow grind through gold with Chun Li, and then like. I lost, and then, like, I just kept losing rank every once in a while, so, like, I went down to, like, I, I, I think I, I don't think I ever dropped that at gold five, but, um, I got close. But then, eventually, yeah. like, I climbed my way back up to platinum. Like, I, I did mm -hmm. get all, all the way there. But, so then Akuma drops, and I do my Akuma placements only against other Akumas. Oh yeah, dude! Totally, <laughs> it's all a like, That's all it is. <laughs> and I place it in fucking diamond. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Diamond player. Mostly like beating up on silver Akumas. Like I didn't. <laughs> like I also Someone? won a match against some dude. other Akuma that was unranked. Placements but, um... are like apparently <laughs> fucked. Yeah. Someone someone in the chat was bitch and this happens a lot, right? People bitch about their placements. Either they feel like uh -huh. they're better than they are, or they're annoyed that they place so high because now they have to try hard. They don't want to try at the game, they just want to beat people, right? Yeah. This so this person came in complaining and someone was like, What's your what's your tag? What's your name in game? They're like, I don't want to do that. He's like, I'm just gonna fucking look. And like managed to find it, and he's like I take everything I said back. Your bitching is validated. Like, you got fucked on a scale I've actually not seen before in this game. They went, like, 0-4 against gold players. One, or 0-4 against platinum players. One once against a gold player. And, like, one once against an unranked player. And then lost the rest or some bullshit. They were in, they got placed into Diamond 4. <laughs> like it was the most horrendous bullshit and they were so pissed about it for fucking good reason <laughs> oh my god like it's insane it's actually fucked up dude it's fucked up cause the only way to get back to your rank is to just lose or fucking yeah. lock in I guess <laughs> mm -hmm. but like I think they're new yeah well, and also, Ugh. like, if when you know that that can happen in your placement ranks, it's, like, really demotivating to want to go through, the, like, the the grind on, like, ranking up an actual, another character. 
Like unless you're oh, like yeah. you, you have to be fully motivated by I just want to try and get better. Totally. No, and this um like the I mean, carrot I hoping... of the of the progression just like is kind of fucked because the the And I was are... I was even yeah. hoping with this patch cuz like characters that I I mean I there was like a, a short list of characters that I thought were going to get a little a little more beefy, you know? Like I thought Manon was going to get a lot more because she was not good. I thought Lily was going to get either changed or a lot more because she also is, like, she has the best move in the game, allegedly, with her Windspire or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, having the best move doesn't mean shit if it does, if, like, the rest of your kit does nothing. Mm -hmm. And, like, I thought those two specifically, and, like, maybe a couple others would get brought up as well. And just like nothing, like, for the most part, everybody who was good is good. Everybody who was bad is is bad, with some exceptions. But, like, the for me, I play... really minor. In a lot of cases, yeah. Like, I play Marisa, right? And I don't... I'm not... I feel no difference. Like, the people I'm struggling against, I'm still struggling against them. The people that I was rinsing, like, the characters overall... Still rinsing them. Like, it's changed. I, I called it at one point, like, a high-level patch. Because, like, I feel like if you play thousands there, of hours of this like the, game the main and you're thing at a high did, level... Well, the main thing it did is, like, it, it allowed some moves to be tied in... To, like, be strung into another move. Like Yeah, yeah. Like, everyone, like, has, like, some, like, new thing that they could add to their... Their their like flow chart or whatever but like dude not but it's all in like the stuff that you they weren't using already it's like maybe your character like is a little has a little more depth but that's i was not, hoping like, a meaningful change i was hoping for fucking changes to more changes to the drive system man like they they adjusted their parry, big thing but was, i'm like that's yeah. i need more well they added the Drive like reversal, what, the, dri- the wake drive up. reversal thing, yeah, yeah. But that's not that different than just ex wake up. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's safer, but like fundamentally, the way people are playing that game, like it's not that different. Now it just means that I fucking whiff. Uh, I spend the bars to whiff a drive reversal, in when I get <laughs> shimmied, yeah. instead of just taking a throw. So that's great. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. And I just, like, I mean, even for me specifically, like, Marisa, her one of her target combos got a juggle. And I was sitting there trying to fucking get shit off of it, and I couldn't. And it turns out it's only a combo extender, so you have to be doing other shit already. And I'm like, everybody was losing their minds about, like, oh, how, how insane this is. Look how fucking broken this is. She can do 8,000 damage. I'm like, yeah, if you have a full fucking bar and you drive rush three times in it, I don't want to do that. I hate drive rush. <laughs> like, it's just not me. So it's know, that game, it though. <laughs> yeah, that, no, it's fucking, it's the game. And I get it, like... That's the thing, right? If you don't, if you're not a huge fan, like, don't play it. Fun fact, I haven't been fucking playing it. I've been playing more Strive than Street Fighter VI before I left. That yeah. game is great. It's all bullshit. I expect bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, I was ha- like, switching to Jury, I was having more fun. Than I oh yeah, originally. I probably see like, that's just, a thing I felt, too. Like, I felt a little more comfortable with like having a, a little more ability to do stuff, like because their oh, yeah. punch is so fucking good. Um, and then like slowly learning <laughs> some of her her specific stuff, like her little her little charge into that you have to do before you can do her ground fireball oh. thing. Where you have Dude, to like, I'm get so... a charge. I'm so torn because I kind of want to learn jury better, but I did. She was the first one I did mm-hmm. my placements with. I got literally as <laughs> low as you can get in the game. I got zero LP. Rock fucking yeah. bottom. Mm-hmm. So it's hilarious. 
Like, I want to fucking, I want to rank up with her, but at the same time, it's hilarious just having her at that level. <laughs> ben lost power here, so that's a podcast. SoulCirclePodcast at gmail.com. SoulCirclePod on Twitter. Anchor.fm slash SoulCircle. Are you still there? And you can, uh, YouTube.com slash at SaltCircle. And you can find me on Twitter at Comic Panels. Links in the description. Hello? Peace. Nothing? The mic's still hot. I could fucking monologue right now. I could do anything. Say anything. Be anything. Could try the try my hand at the outro. Man, the lights keep flickering. I mean, the worst part is I didn't even technically lose internet at first. It's that the router probably the power flick like my light is on currently, but the power like flickered, and I'm sure that took out the router. All right. Well, I can't let this hit for. I'm not going to sit here for 30 minutes and let it rock. I don't know how much longer I'll give it. Three minutes, maybe? Mm -hmm. This is a damn mess. Well, damn...